Right. So, hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is scientist Sharia along with Roger Palmer um, doing our lovely Wednesday session that you all have been looking forward to. This is Scientific Conversations with Roger Palmer. I'm going to give him an opportunity to speak of his stuff. I just want to make sure that everyone can see us. And it looks like our eyes are popping up on the screen right now as we speak. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so please feel free to just, you know, go ahead and say hi. Give us a shout. Let, let us know that you can hear us both. Clearly, go ahead, Roger. Tell us about your company. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys. So, you know, I like to kick off my uh, introduction with a story of like literally how I got into fitness, right? So, I always want to be a personal trainer, right? But before um, this all started, I was working in a corporate job. So, I was working a corporate job, working in the guest service industry, you know, making good money, enjoying myself, enjoying my life. But, you know, there was still something missing. And so, my journey pretty much took a big twist, right? So I will never forget the day. It was February 26, 2016, mm -hmm. when I had a massive ski accident. So I had a contusion in my chest, contusion in my back, grade three laceration, almost died on the ski slopes. Because again, I just wasn't on the right path uh, for what I should be doing uh, when it comes to my life, when it comes to fulfilling myself. So I was going through a lot of regrets that day. And okay. that day, uh, when I left the hospital that day after they picked me up, brought me down into a toboggan, which is not nice to funny when your body is like bleeding out on the inside. It's just not oh, fun. No. And you're just in pain right here. Mm -hmm. And so when I left the hospital, because I was in the ICU, so when I left the hospital that day, um, pretty much I was like still in a lot of pain, uh, still a lot of trauma from the accident. I was going to a lot of physical therapy, I was going to a lot of doctors, but nobody could give me the answers that I need. So I pretty much turned myself into a human experiment, right? So mm. I got back into the fitness industry because uh, I was an athlete before. So I got back in the fitness industry. I went to the Health Coaching Institute, uh, got certified through there. And then that's why I really started to heal my body, you know, learn about the central nervous system and okay. these different types of systems. Okay. And then went to become a personal trainer and so that's when i started my company called rps training uh which owns which currently owns a franchise called camp gladiator so that's all my structure um mm -hmm. is set up right there from a business standpoint so camp gladiator is pretty much where i do more of my big group training and then okay. rps training is where i do more of my one-on-one -on -one, um i ticket elite training right here so camp gladiator is my local right here so that's how it's set up right here that's how i got into the fitness industry how long have you been doing this so i i'm, I'm assuming this has been since 2016 then huh no so pretty much i was just learning since 2016 or everything i pretty much kicked off my fitness career in the pandemic so it was oh. march of uh, that's when i kicked off my fitness career because i decided i'm not going back to a job i'm just gonna go and start my own company and i've been uh, massively successful so far uh, with this company taking on um, the Champions Cup Award, which gave me a $10,000 bonus last year, and then also took on the Art Award for um, bringing in the most clients uh, last okay. year, too, as well. Okay, well, well, congratulations on that. That definitely took a lot of courage and heart to be able to start in the middle of a pandemic, especially uh -huh. something as, as close contact as um, being a, a trainer. So tell me a little bit more about that uh, experience as, as you began to go like really dive into your, your journey. Yeah, so pretty much what happened is that uh, this company is actually known as a outdoor fitness bootcamp company. And so what happened during the pandemic, we had to pretty much shift the brand to all online. Um, so when we went all online, we went virtual online, which made us global now. So mm -hmm. um, Camp Gladiator Global, so that's why I'm excited to be with the brand right here. Uh, so pretty much I've been doing videos online and everything, so I'm good at speaking into a camera. So I'm like, this is a perfect opportunity for me since we're going fully virtual uh, before we go back over during the pandemic. Uh, that's when I started to just launch online, launch virtual, and just learning how to build a brand online uh, when it comes to fitness right there. And okay. that's what I've been doing since March of 2020. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, yeah, like I said, congratulations on that. I've been watching your progress. Very, very excited. You have been doing so good, Roger. You should be very proud of yourself. 
a lot of times people will get into the program and they don't understand the assignment, but you, I mean, whether you realize it or not, you are at 82%. You're almost Ooh, there. You're almost to the finish line, mm -hmm. to, to the big goal. But one thing that you have done so well is you have stayed focused on building your brand. You never stopped. I haven't seen your foot come off the pedal yet. You've been going the whole time, and that's something to be very, very proud of. Just looking at your your continued growth, is, it's just been phenomenal. It's just been phenomenal. So congratulations again yeah. on that. So I'm going to take a moment really quickly just to address our listeners really quickly um, or our viewers really quickly. Let me see who is live. Everybody just give us a shout. Just let us know. Say, hey, give us a wave um, just so that I can know that you all are present. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about the uh, science e-learning and grant program briefly just to um, uh, just kind of make sure that, that everyone is like up to speed on that, especially if they are new to scientific conversations, not quite sure what it's about. And then from there, we'll kind of uh, go over the different things that we saw you do. Um, that helps you to really move through the program as well as you have thus far. Okay. Yes. All right. So for some odd reason, I don't see, let me see. Hold on. I don't see us in the group just yet, but let me just go ahead and refresh. There we are. Okay. So I, I do see us now. Yes, everyone is saying hello. Hey, Delisa. Hey, Jade. Hey, Brian. Nice to see you. I'm sure there are several others that's going to be popping on momentarily as well. But um, yeah, so it's, tell us, how did you hear about the um, science e-learning and, and grant program, Roger? Again, uh, thank God for COVID again, because, um, you know, all of these grants start popping up. And, you know, building my first company, I didn't really talk about grants or anything like that or loans. So, okay. you know, I noticed all big PPP loans, all these grants are coming out. I'm like, wait a minute, I have a company. And so I was on Clubhouse one day and I heard this amazing lady speaking on Clubhouse about Bitcoin, about grants, um, about how much people she's helped. And then, you know, just spreading her knowledge and wisdom for free. And that was her idea. Right and so I, I kind of, she kind of like grabbed me and I'm like, I want to know what she's learning, what she's doing to build a brand online. And so I found a science true clubhouse, true shower speaking on clubhouse right here. So I immediately joined the group and I looked around the group and I, I know, and I didn't really, um, it was about six months. I've been like doing my research and grants and everything. So I think I joined the group in about January, but mm -hmm. then I didn't like really execute until about, let me see, June. Yeah. yeah. That's when I really started to dive in and get the information. Mm -hmm. and everything I was like, what is this i want to know what is this give me more information mm -hmm. you know kind of what process right there and it's just been amazing um just the information that you guys have given me through the program alone i mean i don't know where i find time to execute <laughs> but i think i've only, just going through the um the lessons that you send me with with all the lessons i think i've only even though i finished all of them it's just you can finish all of them and get all the knowledge but the real practice and the real coming, executing them. I think I've only executed about, I would say, to be honest, about 70% that I've okay. executed. I've just seen my brand like really look like how it should look oh, online, okay. right? Mm -hmm. but, but you know what though? In spite of that, I mean, just watching your growth and progress, Elgin and I, um, the uh, your success coach, as you know, I'm, I'm a scientist and then Elgin is a success coach. I pretty much do some of the same stuff, but I kind of oversee everyone. Um, but Elgin, you know, we're just looking at, at, at your, your progress on for what you have been doing, looking at your consistencies, looking at you, your stories, and it has just made things just so easy for you. And I mean, as, as you know, a couple of days ago, because you're now at 75%, we're now working on your business branding kit and going to put mm -hmm. some things together there. And we started having a conversation. I'm like, oh, okay, Roger. Yeah. Like you, you, you really, you have done so well. So for those who haven't, um, haven't had a chance to really take some time to look at Roger, um, his, his look, check out his Instagram, check out his Facebook. As you can see, he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. I, I can't, you know, at this very moment, I don't have my little step and repeat in the background right now, <laughs> but he's doing what he's supposed to do. He's representing his brand. You see brand consistency all over. I think the only thing Roger's missing right now is a, a camp gladiator hat and he probably be all good. But <laughs> so uh -huh, exactly. 
<laughs> he's got the shirt on. He's got the logos and so forth in the background. If you go look at his pages, he's been pretty consistent with that, doing those live demos, popping out that content. Presentation is everything. It's so important for us to be able to always make sure that we present our, our brands as most um, consistently and effectively as possible from the colors all the way down to the ticker to every video that we, we put out there. So in Roger's scenario right now, like you see him with this banner in the background. Nobody could ever just take this video off of Instagram and not really know where he's from or like the name of his company because boom, it's on his shirt. He's got the logo in the background and why they can't necessarily make out like what the logo might be about. You've got the shirt on to kind of back that up. So um, we see the uh, same thing on on the Instagram as well. So that's where I'm going to kind of start off. I'm going to go ahead and dive into that first. So let me get my screen up and let's start with your Instagram, because I think for me, that was the most impressive part. And then um, we'll kind of talk, talk about your Facebook. Do you have a, a YouTube? I think you do. I do. I do have a YouTube. I haven't started posting um, that year, the year as consistently. So yeah. I'm building about, I'm, I'm going to build about a month. I got about a month's worth of content okay. uh, that I'm going to be unloading into YouTube. So I've just been building up content and okay. building up content, YouTube, Pinterest, because that Pinterest idea that you gave wow. me, I'm like, man, I'm going get into it. <laughs> you, got to, you got to listen. I, I don't know if you were listening on the other uh, live with Natasha and Nayana. We were scientific conversations with her, but I, we, we were talking with them. We were talking about Pinterest and the videos that you have. You can seriously put those Pinterest stories, put those videos up, different links and so forth. And what's beautiful about Pinterest that is Instagram just, I don't know why they didn't do it. I, I have no idea why they didn't do it, but but they're clickable. So if someone adds your video to their collection, it's very, very easy for them to now they're marketing for you. Like they just saved it for themselves. They added it to their pin board, but they're also mm -hmm. marketing for you as well. And so it's, uh, it's, it, it spreads very, very quickly with, with Pinterest. So I'm very happy to see that that is on your radar. That's definitely um, a good direction to go. Um, in my opinion, Pinterest is more like middle to upper, upper class. Uh, you will see a different tax bracket uh <laughs> a different type of clientele that will come from pinterest instagram is cool don't get me wrong but um it's, it's just it's just a different feel different type of environment and so it's it's really really good to see that you are also diversifying or, or at least willing to di diversify your um your the, uh, the different platforms that you are using for presentation purposes so that of course um people can find you and you can start speaking to different audiences and then growing from there now with the instagram let me can you send me the link or as yeah. a matter of fact post your, your your link in the comments uh, all right let me see your instagram page so the other viewers can let me go and load it up right there okay go hey. to the live video uh -huh. on, i'm gonna go to the live video on my uh, computer here okay and load it up right now uh, there it is cooler beans i'll be looking for it it's a little bit of a delay obviously when, when you post but as soon as i see it i'm going to click it and then i'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen real quick though okay. um while we're waiting for that to pop up i'm going to go ahead and also include one of the last posts that roger put in our our uh private group is a uh, success science how to um, build your business and receive uh, or qualify for grants for up to 105,000. Um, he's started to become a lot more active in in the group as well, popping out that that um, science ID number and just kind of, you know, sharing the wealth of the uh, different things that that he does by uh, leading by positive example. So I'm going to just really quickly. Uh, pop one of his last posts on there so you can see he's all ripped <laughs> he's got you know he's got his his business colors he's just he's just doing very well now um once we ooh, ooh, hold on i posted that in the wrong space hold on one second <laughs> i saw the black and i just threw it up there okay let me go ahead and pop the link up there from his last post and then there you are. And then I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we're just going to dive right into the IG. Once we finish talking about a couple of different outlets, then 
we would talk about how you can start to incorporate NFTs and, and blockchain technology into your yeah. brand with the content that you already have, which is really exciting because you know if you already have it done, you already have videos. It's a wonderful way for you to go ahead and start getting those things monetized, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Let me know, Roger, when you see my screen, okay? Yes. Yeah, I got it up on my phone and my computer. Oh wow. I also <laughs> shared it. Um also share that link in the um also share that link in the group too for my Instagram. You did cool, cool. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I can see. You can see it? Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm popping back over now. I see us in the group. I'm gonna go ahead and click the link, opening up your Instagram. Let me know when you see it. It's loading a little bit. Do, do, do. Okay, there you are. All right, can you see yourself? Can you see your IG page? Uh, it's loading. Boom, there we go. All right, all right. So as you all can see here, this is what he's used thus far. This has been um, among the most impactful when it comes to him being in the science donor queue and uh, just really representing his brand as well as possible. As you can see here, it's not just, um, it's, it's not very addy. Like he, he is really connecting with his audience. He's, you know, posting his videos. He's, he's um, just kind of demonstrating what it is that he does in his field of genius, just giving them a lot to work with. Um, and if you're looking at the images right now, pretty much everything that he's using, you see his brand there. So what that does is it, it, it lets the investors know, the donors know, the sponsors know that this guy is serious. He's very, very serious about building his brand. He's very serious uh, about, it's, it's, it's deeper for him than it is just about qualifying for the grant, but about building uh, his business and monetizing his business, growing it as a whole. It's not about the followers. It's about the content. Okay. And so as we can see here, if you look at his bio, we're just going to start there. He's, he did very well. It's uh, very easy to read. Um, he has his hashtag there in the uh, headline. I would say, Roger, if you have the space next to your, um, your first um, hashtag that you've put on there. You can also put your science ID number on there that we pull that page out of Jay's book. That was very smart of her to be able to do that, at least until you get through. If no biggie, if you don't wanna do that, but I'm just thinking you got 18% left to go before you see your beautiful grant. So you I mean, sit out. <laughs> right, right, you might as well just go ahead and, and, and do what you do. But then um, you can also see where he made very good usage of his highlights. So as he has different highlights here, he's titled them different things. He's maintained brand consistency there. No qualms. Um, if you're not familiar with how highlights work, it's mostly about just making it easy. Yes, uh, just, just making it easy for people to, maybe they don't wanna scroll through your feed, um, but they just wanna just, just really quickly look at the things that you have elected to highlight as they try to learn about you. So you did very well with that for the different things that, that you've put here in your highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, you're more than welcome to just kind of click through and look at the um, different highlights and stuff there. Obviously he eats clean, he does his fitness videos, that whole thing, but that's really helpful uh, to, to be able to make it easy again for the, for the people, not just the investors, not just the sponsors, but also prospective customers to learn more about you. Because remember your Instagram page, your websites, your Facebook page, all of that is 24 hours. Somebody can be up two o'clock in the morning trying to learn something about you. And, or, you know, maybe they're looking for a, a fitness trainer and they're like, okay, well then where is this individual? But quick question for you, Roger, are you using um, any location specific hashtags it, with your marketing uh, endeavor? Uh, no, I've heard about that from Gary Vee, but I'm not using that, uh, any specific location, Brandy. I do need to do that now, especially that I'm out here in the Houston era. Every time I should make a post, I should put that tag at the top right here. So people can, if we're there looking for, as you said, 
trainers in Houston, right? They can see all the trainers in Houston. Exactly, exactly. So there's a couple different things that, that you can do. When you're posting, um, you can put the, the location itself on that particular post. Um, you know how it says like, where are you? You can put Houston or you can put like maybe some of the local cities and states that you might be willing to travel to if you are nationwide then when you pick that location, you can actually rotate those out, okay? So let's say, for example, you have a virtual program and you're about to deploy a campaign, okay? Well, if you're about to deploy a campaign and maybe you wanna focus on all of the heavy metroplexes in the United States, that might be Atlanta, that might be uh, Chicago, that might be Florida, that might be Cali, then you can, uh, when you're posting, and, and I wish I could like show you how to demonstrate, but, but when you're posting, it'll ask you about the location. But then what you can mm -hmm. also do is you see these hashtags right here? Mm -hmm. What you can also do is you can do like a uh, fitness trainer uh, or uh, fitness trainer Houston, fitness trainer Texas, Houston fitness trainer, um, uh, Houston personal trainer, because what, what will happen is people will look for those hashtags and boom, you are popping up and you're you're presenting pretty much at that point you'll be amazed at how many people who are that's how they find people on instagram at least is they're looking they start off with that hashtag and once they go with that hashtag then they they can proceed from there with the different videos and and, and so forth that you have going does that make sense mm -hmm. yep that makes sense oh wasn't thinking about that one <laughs> let's go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that way you got to book a business and, it, and you can start moving pretty quickly. You'll get people that will, you know, kind of pop up here and there. But you did very well with your hashtag usage. Um, a lot of people don't know, too, that with the hashtags that you're using, let's say, for example, you have like maybe a list of 50 of them. You can even wait like five days or something like that or three days or, or, or however long you want to do it and rotate your hashtags out, too. Um, especially if you've maxed out on the hashtags that you put on there. If you rotate it out, um, it will make you visible in other scenarios as well. So I would encourage you, um, especially if you want compression in like Houston, especially, to get very consistent with using that hashtag along with your, your, your corporate hashtags. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I would also in encourage you to use your, um, what is it, goal getter? Go get a challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would encourage you to go ahead and, and start using that a, um, a little bit more consistent, consistently with your posts as well, because it's cute, it's catchy. They know that it's about you. The word challenge is in there. You can even have a lot of fun and then like open that, that challenge um, in, in a very cost effective way so that when someone is like, maybe looking for some type of challenge, especially because it's the new year. You already know what time it is. Come January 1, everybody and mama going to have like fitness going. <laughs> yeah, they're going to be ready. So you did good with it, including that word challenge in there. But then also having your customers or your perspective. Well, yeah, like, like the people who are participating in your challenge to also get acclimated uh, with inserting that link on their post as well. Mm. because what that does is it lets your prospective customers know that you're not just doing this for fun. Like there are actually people that are patronizing you. They're actually giving you business. Does that make sense? Mm. Yep. That makes sense. And then when you talk about too, as well, like reusing the hashtags, mm -hmm. I didn't even thought about that either. Cause I could literally just go in, edit the post and then just re hashtag it and then post yep. it back. I didn't, you didn't think about that. That's like triple marketing right here. That's like you did that post. You you can just re keep recycling that same post, especially if it's a post that went viral. I just never thought about that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like I said, when you have your, your customers, when they come in and they're on the program and they're documenting their progress or whatever, like have some fun with it. Like, um, Gamify that. Gamification is a really, really big deal. If you have them to start to use those hashtags, if you if you take that time, like this post right here, especially if it's story sized, or you take it and you turn it into a story or a, a reel, that's another layer as well. And they do allow for hashtags um, 
on on some of these different versions that you can deploy as well but then what will happen is people like to have recognition people like to um to, to be acknowledged so if you have someone that's like kicking ass they taking names you're like oh my god great wonderful yes yes then you can um when they post let them know that you know when they use that uh hashtag they may very well be featured on your page and then what will happen is once they use that hashtag and you discover their post then just go ahead and reshare it as a story feature them in the program so once again they can see that you know you have people that that are supporting your business that they believe in what you do they're not just seeing you doing all these hard exercises that's making my stomach hurt right now but <laughs> <laughs> but they can also see that there are others as well. Does that make sense? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. But yeah, so overall, like I said, you, you, you've done really well. Look at you. Look at this. <laughs> you've done really well with that. Um, I'm excited about the idea of bringing forth your different uh, templates because with your business branding kit, you're, you're going to have a story template, which is like the long, I call them, um, high rise or skyscraper size type of um templates that will have like your name it'll have um you will be able to put like what you're doing because you got to think about it before they come to the comments to see your caption they're going to look at like the some they're gonna look at your headline so when we give it to you you're just gonna want to use that template put your video in the middle it's, it's going to be transparent and then along the top you you'll put like what you're doing what you're demonstrating you know something catchy to get them to want to play your video or mm -hmm. to turn it on um we can put like a cta on there to where it's going to say save um save this post um a lot of people aren't aware likes are all good but people saving your post it holds a whole lot more weight yep that's true mm -hmm. yeah so you definitely even even like if you're doing a video and you're stopping and, and and talking to them you also would want to encourage them to you know save this post maybe point down towards the bottom especially once you get your template so they know hey save this post don't just like it save it um ask them an engaging question about it that's one thing i'm not seeing you do right now that you could do but so far like i said still so good because you've been very consistent you're putting the content out there now it's just a matter of you scaling it up and getting people active on your post because the more active they are the more you're, the more you're going to keep showing up in their feed and then from there when you start to gamify with the uh challenge even more or maybe you give away you know for, for for christmas maybe you give away a free week or something i don't know some some type of promo then when you do that um that will get people engaged as well have you ever considered doing any giveaways oh yes i do them um all the time so what i do i have a private facebook group so like all my clients that sign up with me i have a private facebook group um that um i do all the giveaways in Okay. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah. So, um, with the private, <laughs> look at Gary B, uh, with the, look, it looks like one now kind of like where you, you, you become the five people you surround yourself with drop five, drop your five in the comments. That was, that was very helpful. That was definitely a, a good start to be able to get people engaged, but then don't be afraid to pull your giveaways outside of that private group. And, you know, um, maybe give away, like, like I don't know what, your business model is from a pricing standpoint. But if you give away um, a, a week, a month, two months, three months, however long of like maybe some VIP one-on-one -on -one virtual sessions or, or something like that, and then just start targeting the fitness communities, but then also um, networking on Instagram with other people that that's in your field of genius, not necessarily um, other fitness trainers, because obviously they're going to feel threatened by you, but there are other people who run parallel to you that you can network with as well to release those giveaways on their pages if they have large, well-engaged followers. That's another really good way to boost your following, to get a lot of traffic going, and, and to start to get more and more people involved in your challenge, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, but yeah, yep. so so far go ahead i'm sorry go ahead 
Oh no, just taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but but so far so good. I mean, you have done very 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 well. So I just wanted to take some time to go through some of these slides. This one right here was like one of my favorites. This was um, what she had going on on the um, your. I don't know what station this was. This is one of the news stations. They must be local to you or something like that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell us more, more about that real quick? Uh, yeah, so that was an interview right there with, um, which one was it? Let me pull it up right here. See if I can see it right there. Yeah, so that's an interview that came out. We were celebrating a uh, 13 year anniversary uh, for CG. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we did. They came out, they did an interview for us. It also was a promo that we run. So it was a big promo that we were running over uh, the summer where you could sign up for uh, almost two months for only $9 right there before they made a commitment uh, to the membership right there. So just showcasing more of the local community. Hey, we're back outside. You know, we're also virtual too as well. Um, if you want to come and train with us and then, you know, showing them how the program works uh, from a virtual standpoint and then from an outdoor standpoint uh, to spread it right there. Love it. Love it. Love it. That's good. Yeah. So this was good. This was good for you to be able to capture this moment and go ahead and put it on your IG. I love the fact that you, you took some time to be able to offer like a really nice uh, affordable promo for them to be able to jump down on super affordable. No excuses. Not trying to hear it. Not trying to yeah. hear it at all. Nine dollars, ten dollars. Nope. Um, to get them going. So so that was a good move for you as well, because a lot of people, they they like to see again, other people using your products and services, seeing what it is that, that, you know, they have to say about it, whether or not they are tapping in and enjoying, you know, what it is like, like they see you and then it's like, okay, but then can you do the same thing with other people as well? So I think you're definitely mm -hmm. on the good path with that. that. That was something that we really appreciated uh, being able to see. And then as you can see here, ladies and gentlemen, he also started showing like He's not afraid. He's not operating with scarcity. He's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give you all some workouts real quick. You know, here, try this and then let me know, you know, what you think about it. The only thing right now that I would say is missing from this, um, Roger, don't play with your brand. These are good videos of you working your butt off right now. You're giving them free game. You're showing them how to do the workouts always 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 make sure that you have like your your brand consistently on there you can have a ticker again once you have your templates that's going to solve this problem but in the interim there are certain videos to where you can have something like along the bottom that's not getting blocked like it's not blocking your movements or anything anything like that um mm -hmm. to where you could have like some type of call to action okay mm -hmm. Your call to action might be, you know, the Go Getter Challenge, join the Go get, Go Getter Challenge, maybe a, a, a short code for them to get involved, maybe a short link for them to get involved, or uh, maybe a, 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 a keyword, hint, hint. If you have any type of bots, messenger bots, Instagram bots on your, your page for your business, you can even give like certain keywords right now and I'm gonna do a session about this later, just kind of talking about automation, but you can give them a command and tell them like comment with the word lunges, bear crawl, um, and uh, to, to, to get my free guide or my free tutorial or whatever your offer is so that, you know, it gets people to like take action on that, that particular post. They're, they're commenting, they're liking that whole thing. And then you're also distributing whatever information you want to go out. You are building your list. List building is so important. We see a lot of people who will get on, on Instagram, Facebook, and they will lean too heavily on their network and then they will not build their list simultaneously so that, okay, well, Facebook decides to throttle you, well, then you're screwed because now you can't get a hold to your people. But if every single time that you're posting, you're putting lead magnets out there, ways to be able to capture them. Maybe you give one free tip a day or one free tip a week of, of something like this, and maybe you send to them by a text or send to them by email, but that gives them incentive for them to be able to give you, the, um, give you their contact information so that you can have that list. And when you get to like 250,000 followers or whatever, like you're not being, uh, 
speak it again speak it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right you're gonna get there but, but but yeah like you have a way to be able to communicate with them on a day-to-day -day basis regardless of what's going on with instagram or or um facebook or or anything like that okay but yeah this is Perfect. a this is a really, really good start. Super proud of you. I hope that, ladies and gentlemen, you are taking notes of like how consistent he he was during his time, like before, during, and after his time in the program. But you can also see him start to pick up more and more with with his different postings and so forth. All right. So I'm gonna and go ahead. One, go ahead. I'm sorry. One thing for let go die too, and you're right about it when you say you know the story. The story is a 24 hour advertisement. So mm -hmm. I never. My stories go die. I'm always showing people what I'm doing on a daily basis. If you go to my store right now, you would see all my clients and everything. And that's where I really post my story so people can see that, oh, he's actually training people on a day-to-day -day basis too as well. So that's one thing I never let go die right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So like I said, yeah, like once you once you get super consistent with that, you know, um, don't forget to, uh, with, with your post, to add your student ID to, to some of these posts as well. So thankfully, when you submitted your Instagram link on your page, we were able to find it. Um, but you actually could have gotten to that 82% a little bit faster if you had been consistently putting those, your student ID on your post. So I know you did it on, on uh, Facebook, but don't forget to do it on Instagram too, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's one thing I thought about lately. I'm like, why did I not do this from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Make it easy. Don't make, try to make it as simple as possible for the, um, the investors, the donors, the, the uh, sponsors to be able to find you, especially as, yeah. as it pertains to science. So for those who don't know, your science ID number is the same as your student ID number, okay? That, that's also your invitation ID. It's the same identifier. So anytime you use that hashtag side, don't make me say your number wrong, Roger, but that um, science ID number, when you put that on the post, we can literally go to, um, to Google or to even, even to Facebook to pull it up. So real quick, let me, yep, let me, uh, what's your uh, science ID number? Uh, let me pull it up right here for you. Go to Facebook. As I just dropped it on every single post. <laughs> you did. Uh, I was so proud. <laughs> you you uh, went all the way back too. Retro. Yeah, 665064. 665064. And as you can yeah, see six here, Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So as you can see here, now we've got a bunch of posts. We have a lot of content to look at. We don't have to bother Roger and, hey, can you send me this? Can you send me that? If we want to see how the customers are responding, it's right here at our fingertips on demand. Look at, we can see live videos of him doing what he does. We can see how they're responding. We can see his activity in the group. Hint, hint. We got a lot of students in the program, but they're, they're not coming to the hub. <laughs> they're not coming to the group and you know continuing with with their endeavors to keep drawing attention to themselves remember out of sight out of mind you don't have this problem roger you have done a phenomenal job with that but absolutely this right here is one of my favorite posts this thing with the um tortoise and the hare mm -hmm. i thought that that was dope i said all right now roger <laughs> <laughs> let's go Right. You did really, really well with that because you're also speaking to the people and you're displaying your leadership skills as well. But yeah, so so for those who are, are watching, all I did was I took his student ID number and I've got content for days of just little things to look at to be able to pull up information about him. Um, something else that we can do, even though he's not quite using it that much on Instagram, if I close out this window and I pull it up like um, as, a, as a hashtag, when he starts to use his hashtags on, on Instagram, um, all of these different videos will start popping up instantly as well. And then once again, if I go to Google or if I just go to the search bar and I hit his science ID there, uh, when his um, his post starts to to index, 
um, it'll show up here in this field as well. One thing though that we also wanna be very careful with is um, just to always make sure that the posts that you put them on are uh, public. So uh, Roger, you did a very, very good job with that so that we can see it when we come to Facebook. But then also what you wanna get into the habit of doing is tagging your RPS, um, RPS training, your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. You wanna um, mention that in, in your own post. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, so, so let's say for example, you see how you did Roger Palmer is with, and then it's one person plus 10 others. What you would mm -hmm. wanna do is do, um, is with, like sometimes you can tag your own page, Otherwise, as you're writing out the content for that particular post, mention yourself, mention the page, make it stupid easy for them to be able to find you. Um, but then also, um, as you can see here, how you use the uh, Bitly link, and, and, mm -hmm. and I know you just recently learned about Bitly, but once you start having your, your, your uh, short links, you can take those short links and then, um, use one for your particular brand instead. And then something else that you wanna make sure that you do is um, make good use of your canvas to the point of where you're using your website link as well, okay? So maybe you'll have like website, cause you'll see us do this on the uh, science post too. It'll say like website and it'll have like a little icon or an emoji colon and it'll have like the link to the website. And then it'll have like, maybe if we have a chat bot, we'll have a link to that. And then we'll have an, um, another link that might go to like an online booking system for like maybe a free consultation. And so when you're doing that, that, that is uh, really helpful because it creates conversion points. Are you familiar with conversion points? I uh, know, but I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. So um, when, you, when you pop some dope content out there, and you know mm -hmm. that you're gonna get some activity, some engagement on that particular post. You always wanna make it count. So every single time, every single post, you really wanna get into the habit of tagging the business or the brand that is associated with. And what'll happen is Facebook will even start to optimize that as well. And it'll start showing up on Google because Facebook has a, a, a certain type of authority to where Google will optimize that a lot, a lot more quickly than maybe your website would. So if yeah. you're if you're putting the name of your brand and mentioning yourself um, in that post, tagging your your company in that post and then sharing, then that can help you as well and just include that in the um, in the caption itself so that as soon as they like it. Now they don't have to work to find you because right now, even though I know um, as your scientist, like I know the link to your page. I have had to ask you a couple times, but <laughs> I know the link to your page. You want to catch them while they're hot. You want to catch those impulse shoppers, those people who are just inspired and they want to take action right away. You want to right there at their fingertips for them to be able to very quickly just reach out to you and then go from there. Okay. Yeah, and that's what I noticed too. Like the other day when you did that post of like, how does science look on Google? I'm like, man, I need to step my game up way more because I want people just to be able to input it and it pops up just like that right across Google, right across Facebook, right yep. across Instagram. That's when I really got into like the hashtagging it, hashtagging it so it can really blow up bigger. Yep, yep. You want them to be able to read it. Google's going to read it. They actually read the titles of your images. That blew my mind. I'm like, really? Somehow they read the, the title of the image. Um, they read the level of engagement, likes, comments, and shares. Um, they're always changing the algorithm, but there's a couple different ways that you can make that um, show up in Google quicker. But this will definitely come into play when you start getting on uh, YouTube you really will appreciate that because a lot of people will come and then don't be afraid to use tags, hashtags. Um, if I showed you, hold on, let me go to YouTube real quick. Oh, why is it doing this in all caps? So you see how right here in the center is showing all the different videos? 
Um, when, yes. we, when we start to go live, when we start to run ads, hint, hint, let's say, for example, once you get your, your YouTube page going and you decide that you want to run a Facebook ad, and we'll talk about this more in marketing, marketing science on your next round for your next course. But with uh, YouTube, if you take the, the link to like one of your live videos and maybe one video for the ad itself might be an image or it might be on a slightly different topic. You can take the videos that you put on YouTube to push that up as well to where maybe they're considering you and they're looking for testimonials. One of the uh, biggest, most effective tricks is if you have any testimonial videos, you can uh, put those on YouTube and then turn around and then put those in the comments of your post itself. So if you um, have a post on your Facebook page, you can kill that objection right out the gate by putting a link to some of your, your testimonials and some of your other training videos right there in the body or, or in the content of your post. Yes, awesome. So I'm going to show you all really quickly. See, these are all Facebook. This is not even YouTube right here. So I don't want, I don't want, um, I don't want Facebook right now. I want to show you all how the YouTube videos look so you can get an idea of what I mean. Okay, here's the one. So this is the one uh, for the scientific conversations that we did with Natasha and Nayana. Uh, I don't know, in, in um, October or so, we haven't started pumping the videos yet. We're waiting on our ads to be able to go live for our newest campaign. And whenever it gets done loading, I'm, I'm going to show you how we did the profile as we follow each and every. All right. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to do. Oops. That's my detail one. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Connection here is a bit slow, but it's okay. It's um, all of their assignments and so forth. All right. So as you can see here, you see how we did the hashtags in the body. And then we like tagged like a location. We could have put additional tags like business, entrepreneurship, um, business tips. Uh, they have tags that, that sometimes help. Not all the time. It just depends. But then notice here, we did not let this go without posting some nice CTAs here, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have some specific call to actions for them to be able to take immediate action while they're looking at that and they don't have to look for it. This is what I mean about like putting this type of stuff in your Facebook post as well. So say what you have to say, pop your hashtags on there that's relevant to what it is that you do or your campaign or your brand. But then also take some links, give them something to do after they've sat there and watched your video or your videos um, during that time or they've taken the time to read your posts so that you can in, uh, increase and have more conversions, more, more revenue coming in from your business. Okie dokie? Yep, makes sense. All righty. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that can come with your business branding kit is definitely your um like if, if you need a youtube banner or anything like that but it sounds like you you've gotten pretty far on your own which is a, again one of the things that really helps you move as quickly as you have through the um donor queue is because you had so much already for yourself from a uh, marketing standpoint um for your your branding and so forth so before i go any further i'm we're going to go ahead and talk about um how to use this exact content um, to create your NFTs and, and to incorporate blockchain. But before I do that, I know I gave you a ton of information. What type of questions do you have for me thus far? You or any uh, other listeners, my bad. Yeah, so, so far, uh, you know, we covered about lead magnets. Uh, that's definitely one that I'm gonna go into. Um, gamified it again with the challenge, as you said. Uh, using the Houston hashtags, using fitness trainers, so those hashtags was really good. You know, hashtag, you know, only thing you said, um, automation. You said you were going to go into that with another video. because So that's the only thing pretty much I would say I have um, questions on uh, when it comes to more like automating your content to where if they say, if I said to put comment lounges, how do we get them to it okay. to go into a message part? Okay, okay. So yeah, so <laughs> um, I'm going to do something with messenger marketing, you're going to need a messenger bot. 
in order to be able to accomplish some of the things that we are speaking of. But messenger bots can actually be used on Instagram. It can be used on Facebook. It can be used on WhatsApp, Telegram, you name it. Just write down mini chat. Hold on, let me just go ahead and uh, drop that in there. Uh, I'm gonna drop the link in the comments for everyone so that you can have access to that as well. Let me just go ahead and do it now. Uh, but yeah, mini chat can help with that. So once you have your bot build out, um, maybe some brief videos, um, have something set there for people to book appointments and, and so forth uh, with whatever CTAs that you would like to incorporate there, then what you can do is create certain keywords. So that's a whole another scientific conversations <laughs> video. <laughs> um, we talk about that in automation of science. I'll um, go ahead and do a session to kind of go over that. But um, yeah, yeah. Um, after you build out your bot um, on mini chat, then you can pull up you can um, have different keywords, okay? So what that means is that, my apologies, anytime someone is in the system and they're putting up some type of a keyword command, like we said, lunges, RPS, training, uh, go-getter, whatever you want them to say, it can automatically trigger your workflow. They can, um, as a matter of fact, let me show you. We have a post out there right now for science. It's, it's a couple of them. We have a getaway post that we're doing it on, a vacation to where they can get like a vacation getaway certificate. It's some little fun stuff that they have to do in order to qualify for it. We made it crazy easy for them to be able to do it. But if you go, let me see if I can find the post real quick, hold on. And then I'll pop that in the comments so you all can kind of test it out and you can see what, uh, how it performs. But we have a post on our page. We're talking about a vacation getaway. We're asking them where they want to go. And as soon as they comment or they reply, it automatically triggers a workflow, okay? So we have it on the vacation getaway post. We have it on this post right here, where it's like um, scientific information, where it's talking about the e-learning and, and grant program. And then we have it on um, the one with our upcoming ad. But as you can see here, it says, drop your top three vacation places below. The moment that they stop to respond to this post, it's automatically going to like their, um, like their comment. It's going to respond to them with whatever you want to say to them. And then it's also going to send them a message inside of their DMs, letting them know um, whatever it is that you have to offer. So you can build this out inside of a mini chat. And then once you're done, you can put it on like your Facebook and your IG at the minimum. And then now when you're running different campaigns or when someone uses a specific hashtag or whatever, you can run your automations that way. Did that answer your question briefly? I know it's not detailed enough, but did that give you a, a good enough idea? Oh, that's a good enough idea. I just need to know where to go and what to do. So I'm going <laughs> to pretty much that one tonight, tonight. I ain't waiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that one is fun. Like we have a, a, a lot of fun with our bots. A lot of people, they don't fully understand it, but you even see people, Grant Cardone uses them. Like all the big names, like we all use them because the automation is just it's 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 major and we were on clubhouse for example and we use those automations we generated over 1500 leads in less than 72 hours by way of just those types of automations to where they took whatever action we wanted them to take and then we did a crawl and with the crawl we took them from one social media outlet to another but then we also um triggered uh, different type of a uh, short code keyword commands to help them along the way. So I did go ahead and post the link there so you all can mm -hmm. try it for yourself if you haven't done so already. I just posted the link there. When you click it, like I said, just name some locations and it'll pop that out for you. I'm also going to show you another concept that, that we did. And you can do this too. I'll use this one, for example, 
the one that's talking about the information packets. And as you can see here, we said just type the words inform me or just type the words info and we'll send it to you via messenger. So people can come onto the post, they can type whatever keyword. You can be on video, like talking to them and, you know, like uh, telling them whatever you're going to tell them, giving them their free tips. Maybe you have a free ebook that has like the top 10 things that they can do to help flatten their tummy or something. I don't know, or, you know, work on their glutes, you know, their, their, their butt or whatever. You can have like an infographic or, or an ebook that you want to give to them. Well, then all they have to do is comment with whatever the command is. And as you can see here, we didn't go and like every single one of these posts. The bot did. And it gave them that automatic response. And then it also sent them a message. So I'm going to send that to the book chat as well. So you should have that as two really good examples. And then the last one that I'm going to send, share with you is the one for the ad. So with this particular ad, the way it's set up, uh, you, you actually, I think you commented on this one. But as you can see, it, was, it started out as a post on our page. We have um, our headline. We have the engaging question that we're asking them. And then we also have our conversion points on that post. Something really simple, pretty eye-catching, good colors. Anybody that comments on their post when they say how much they need, the bot will respond to them. There you are there. The bot will respond to them, get them some information right then and there. Because again, the world doesn't wait for anybody. They want to answer uh -huh. right now. So give them an answer right now. But you will be amazed at how much of a difference this type of stuff will make when it comes to um, your social media marketing, marketing endeavors. And again, just remember, this is not just on Instagram. I mean, not just Facebook. You can do this on Instagram too and not have any issue um, with using the, the bots uh, to work to your advantage in, in, in that capacity, okay? Yeah, and it's so funny that I said that because that's how I knew about the science program is I think you were doing like a campaign like that where you, I think you said just DM me X and then it started to roll and that's how I got into the science group. So now I remember now mm -hmm. that you're saying it. Yep, yep, 100%. So now more homework for you to go even mm -hmm. better through the program. <laughs> it's that just is <laughs> start looking at your videos and, and even think about that. Like if you know that you're going to post um, the video on YouTube, if you know that you're going to post your video on Instagram, if you know you're going to post it on Facebook, get into the habit of incorporating some type of universal um, keyword, like start talking about that in the video so that no matter where they are, you can find out like who your serious customers are and you're gaming the algorithm. Let me look at y'all faces. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> You're gaming um, the algorithm at that point to say, okay, uh, when they comment on your post, it actually exposes um, that post to their network. When they share it, it's a whole different network that they're gonna. The, um, Facebook is going to show it to. Instagram is is going to show it to. So it's it's a different type of thing. But when you get them involved or you ask them questions and then have them like comment below, there's a woman who's a pastor. I watched this lady grow to over five hundred thousand followers. Car Chronicles or something like that. Uh, Jamila Hey Girl. Um, <laughs> but what she did was she learned to she'll say stay uh click tag or share click tag or share uh she'll tell them to to do that that's a call to action that you can say while you're in the video but in addition to that what you can also do is like i said give them those different keyword commands while you're recording or maybe like maybe you'll go through a set real quick and then when you get done you get up and you start talking to them you rap into them you let them know this that and the third and then you give them some type of call to action, something for them to do to get engaged in your posts, to get it more in circulation, to get those CTAs flowing and get your bot triggering, get your list uh, growing, all of that will then come into play. But you can also, if you take, when you get your templates from your business branding kit, put that on the, the um, ticker at the bottom 
so that even if you haven't gotten to that point of your video to where you're talking to them about you know what you're going to say to them it's already on the screen because yeah. you might have had and once, and once you told me that the other day too i was like huh you know what i actually need to start making sure like i'm putting it so what i did in canva i uploaded my logo to canva and i started slapping on every single piece mm -hmm. of um, piece of marketing that i'm doing yeah. yes water market is so important because i think a lot of people forget especially in the moment when we start talking about these nfts you're going to realize like this is so critical but um they'll come and they'll post on on instagram but then maybe somebody will take the video down and repost it on on their page there are ways that you can do it it's apps for that and so well now they broke the connection because even though you're you're assuming that well if i post on my page they know it's me yeah but if they rip your video you can rip videos from youtube you can rip videos from facebook if they rip the video well then now they have no way to get a hold to you so mm -hmm. it, this is all good when you have this logo in the background but just remember what i said for those people who don't realize what's behind his head right now where it says like a uh, uh, mm -hmm. cg yeah thank you i'm like oh don't make me mess it up C cg so uh, cute that's called an <laughs> avatar logo okay mm -hmm. it's super cute but if he hadn't have been sitting right here with camp gladiator on his shirt i would never know what that meant mm -hmm. so for that reason that's why you want to have like if you're going to use your avatar you also always want to incorporate like the longer name for that as well along with some type of cta so no matter who's watching the video no matter where they ripped it and put it any of that they're going to be able to always reconnect with you find you locate you and go from there okay mm -hmm. all sense. right any other questions before we dive into this nft blockchain thing oh uh, i'm excited to go to nft <laughs> all right all right so um as you know that's my jam i love blockchain technology it is way of the future it's not even the future it's today okay yes. it is today so i'm gonna give you all a moment get your pins and and, and your pads okay. ready because the next 30 minutes to an hour that's what we're going to be talking about right now is how roger palm or anyone else for that matter you can take your all these different marketing tactics that you just heard us talk about different ways to monetize and scale your business now you're going to be able to take these concepts and em employ this or deploy it on a um, nft marketplace or with or to incorporate blockchain technology so let's say for example you have one of the videos that we were looking at on your instagram page okay hold on one second i'm gonna have to go back to it you share my screen All right, so I'm, I've gone back to sharing my screen. Let me see if I can get there. Yes, so I'm going to go back to the Instagram. Let me find the link that you put up there. Come on, come on. You know how it, it truncates it and it makes some of them disappear? Mm-hmm. It, can can you send it to me on Messenger real quick, Roger? Which one do you want? The link to your IG. Oh yes, let me go ahead and do that right there. Oh, awesome! I also drop a link to my website too, as well. You did? Okay, cool. Yeah. New website that I'm rebuilding. All right forwarded them right there for you okay oh there it is perfect all right yes yeah, so let's say for example your, your, your average business owner there they will say i want to nft my logo but how do i say this it's deeper than that okay mm -hmm. basically what you can do is you can literally take virtually anything and turn it into an nft so this video that we have of you right now of you getting it in you working out you're just showing people you know how it works they're seeing your body in motion you can literally take this video and turn it into an nft 
For those who are not familiar with what an NFT means, it stands for non-fungible token, all right? Um, the easiest way to remember what NFTs are about, all right, is think of, I like to give the example of a stadium, all right? And with the stadium, um, they have hundreds of chairs, okay? Okay, like, like they have like row A, seat 347, okay? But they all look exactly the same, right? The difference, the only difference is that row and that seat numbers to where it's like, it looks exactly the same, but it's not. It, that is the unique identifier that is recorded on the blockchain by way of NFTs, okay? So if you take this video, all right, and then um, offer it as an NFT, maybe you uh, package your deal, okay? So maybe you have the video, but then let's say, for example, you'll give them like, um, they buy the video as, as an NFT, but then maybe it comes with a three-month coaching session with them or 30, uh, a 30-day 30 coaching package with them, um, maybe like, one-on-one -on -one check-ins or something like if you put some decent packages together you can de deploy those with the nft and that's what makes it unique okay and that's what also builds value and inspires that individual to be able to acquire that particular video and actually pay for it like people are like oh well, why would i pay for it when it's already out on Instagram. The purpose of it is he's going to package and pair that with something that you can't get by just having this video on uh, that's already uh, out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, you got the wheels third in now. Yeah, so more homework for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is, ah. <laughs> I wanna see you think about three packages for you to be able to put together, um, at least mm -hmm. three. All right, three different packages. You can do like a good, better, best type of thing. You have three different series, maybe three different uh, price points. And then think about how many you want to deploy because when it comes to NFT, it's the same as different types of a cryptocurrency. Um, it's, it's about scarcity. It's about um, something being rare, something being unique. So let's say, for example, if maybe you have like series 250, right? And you have like a video like this, and you may have like um, a four weeks uh, package or something with them and you give them like once a week, they, they uh, check in with you and you give them free tips or something like that. Or um, maybe um, you give them like a full 30 day and you have like maybe a collective of all of these different videos or maybe you after your consultation, you discover the different things that they need to be able to, to um, do their, to, to reach whatever fitness goal that they have. Well, then what you can do is um, offer that as another package as well, okay? Or, mm -hmm. or uh, another option inside of that package. Only you really know like what your customers really want, but I'm just encouraging you to write down three different packages to be able to put together, to be able to offer it to your customers. And then when you go out to the NFT marketplaces and you start to um, deploy them or you, you start to release them, you're minting your NFTs, then they know that, okay, for one, I get the video. I get something that's super rare, it's super unique. Um, we'll talk about bounties and royalties in, in, in a second because they can sell that, resell it. Now they can make money off of you and then the money keeps growing and going. But then they also have like whatever value you have packed into that particular NFT by way of something called an unlockable. Do you know what an unlockable is? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. So an unlockable, if you do like go to... Uh, you can, I'm not gonna say all NFT platforms will have it, but a lot of them do, especially OpenSea, they have like your unlockables or they'll have like a lockbox. So they all have their different terms. But what happens is when they acquire that NFT or when they purchase it, it, it 
it's, it's like a lockbox. It's like a secret compartment of information that they can only get, they can only see when they purchase that NFT from you or from whoever mm -hmm. resold the NFT. So think of it like a like a, a treasure chest of just goodies that you might have for them. It might be an ebook, it might be a restaurant gift card of hopefully green food, it might be meal prep like oh my god whatever packages you come up with you would just put those in that nice little compartment so that they had they gain access to something exclusive when they purchase that nft ah that makes that makes so much sense now now you got the wheel turning because i just created like some you know vegan recipes that are super exclusive that i haven't released online or everything so like packaging all of that together into my nft as that unlockable I've heard it used in different ways, but yeah, I get exactly what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just different ways to build more and more value because again, it's all about rarity. It's all about limited edition, gold edition, platinum edition. Like you're getting them excited because mm -hmm. they're like, I got something that nobody else has. And people love mm -hmm. that stuff. Like they get excited, you know, <laughs> about mm -hmm. that. But that's why you want to be able to do that with those unlockables alone. But then check this out. Wait, hold on. I'm hoping y'all keep it open. <laughs> oh, let me get the pen off. Let me get the pen off. <laughs> I'm hoping y'all keep it open because y'all know how I am when I start flowing. Um, <laughs> but before I dive into the bounties and the royalties, for those who are not familiar with like what NFTs are, um, the the juice, the sauce behind NFTs, the non fungible tokens, are um, it's actually the smart contract that's behind it okay a lot of people they just they just they don't get it they see this nft they don't understand like what's significant about it but the smart contract is immutable which means that once like the it's it's a block of code that tells the computer or the blockchain like pretty much the rules of engagement all right so the smart contracts can have royalties in it it can have bounties um in it if you have like maybe a a, a charity that you want to donate money to automatically with every single sale hit hit ladies and gentlemen people are really into uh social what do they call it socially responsible companies that are doing something for their community to kind of pay it forward so you if you have like a nice charity in your area or something that you want to be able to donate to you can carve out a wallet inside and include that in your smart contract to automatically send them money for every single transaction it's a great way to raise funds for, for whatever your favorite organization is um but either way the power is in the smart contracts okay um it's it's like it's like you're cutting out the middleman okay and that's super important especially if you're going to use bounties or royalties or anything like that they need to know exactly where they can go or or they need to have that confidence and knowing that they're not going to rely on roger to give them any money for this or you're not going to rely on them to give you the royalties if they sold your video for them or your nft for you the smart contract is going to give you your royalties and then it, it can also give that individual um any bounties that they may that you may have encoded inside of that particular nft now open c they have some things in there by default last time i checked it was like you put your royalty percentage and i'll break that down momentarily like how that works but you have like your royalty percentage in there but then you also have bounties um they're like up to 2.5 percent as like a commission okay for the bounties itself again i'll kind of go into more detail about that in, in a second but then uh they will also have um they can go up to 10 percent. that's a custom function um that you gotta kind of get a, get a little creative so i, I don't want to confuse you with that but you can offer <laughs> more um uh, for people to jump down and to be able to help you and heal that or cure that what's in it for me because there's a lot of people that may love what you do and they may share here and there but if you put a little icing on the cake and you're like uh yeah well if you you know if you want to collect a bounty by helping me sell this nft let's say for example maybe you sold it for a hundred dollars or whatever they can buy the NFT from you um, if they have the money for it, if they don't, but then they, they 
they have a large fitness community, you attach a bounty to that particular NFT to where they can take your link and usually on like OpenSea, it'll have like the link to your NFT on their platform. And then you'll see this long number on the, it's like an alphanumeric, that's usually a wallet address that's attached to the, the end of that particular link. That's how you can usually tell if there is a bounty that is associated with that particular NFT or someone is trying to collect a bounty on the sale of that NFT. So their job is to bring you a customer. Their job is to bring someone to purchase that NFT from you. So that's what bounties are about. There are people, go on YouTube, think I'm lying, go on YouTube. There are people who literally just go around to different NFT outlets looking for people who have posted their NFTs with the bounty and they'll sell it for you. So now mm. you've duplicated yourself. You've, you've duplicated your endeavors to where now you got 100, 500 people popping your fitness videos out there. It might be a lady, she's salivating over you because she's looking at you working out and she got her girls looking <laughs> at you. <laughs> they want to be <laughs> Or you no. might have a guy who wants to get ripped like you and they're like okay bet let's let's you know go ahead and make some money off of this they're building awareness they're spreading the word but then they also making some money on the side as well so that's the power of bounties okay um it's a lot of i wish i had the video there there's um some videos on youtube where they they even talk about that like how you can go or, or like where to go to find some of the best nfts that have bounties pos uh, um, activated on their profile and then a lot of times you can go to open c or um sometimes nifties has it it's, it's, it's a couple of different nft platforms i'm going to show you all how to find uh different platforms to kind of do a little bit of a market study but um, a lot of them have little symbols and little emblems to let you all know whether or not that NFT has a bounty associated with it. So even if you are like, oh, I'm not ready, I'm not ready to incorporate blockchain with my business, but I want to make some additional uh, income, then you can just go to an NFT marketplace and find out different types of NFTs that are out there on the market, and then find out whether or not they have bounties and just sit there and collect bounties all day. Especially if you're good at marketing, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but yeah, so, so that's the bounty side of it, but then that deals with your customers that gets them involved. You can gamify that. You can say, look, the person who gets the most sales, you might give them a bonus or something like that financially or whatever you want to give them as an incentive. You can do that at that point. But then what you can also do is, uh, royalties. Okay. Now, see, a lot of people, you see Gary Vee, they'll uh, talk about NFTs and, and, and so forth, and they'll talk about the royalties, but they almost always forget about the bounties. And in this day and age, when people are losing their jobs right now due to mandates, uh, they need additional income, or maybe they want to get into the crypto industry, but they're not quite comfortable with air quotes, sacrificing their money, okay, their own money, but they, they want to passively tap into the industry. Well, that's another way for them to be able to get involved because whatever currency you elect to create or to use when you mint your NFT, it could be Ethereum, it could be Solano, it can be different types of currency, but whatever currency you elect to, um, to attach to that particular NFT for them to be able to purchase it, that's a very passive way for them to, to start to collect that crypto from you. Um, my apologies, um, to, to start to collect crypto as a whole. So for them, if your NFT was Let's just say again, a hundred dollars. I'm not even about to try to guess where Solano or Ethereum is, but hey, whatever that is translates to the other currency. Now they have that in their wallet. They didn't have to sacrifice any of their money. All they did was refer your NFT to one of their fitness buddies that want to work out. And, and they also have interest now in what it is that you have to offer. And that for as long as they hold that NFT, they can monetize in more ways than one while helping you at the same time to build your brand and to make money. Okay. So again, that's, that's bounties. But now talking about royalties, 
with the royalties, let's say, for example, you have like, you're like, uh, yeah, you can, you can sell my NFT. That's all good. You know, make your money, have your fun, collect your crypto. But at the same time, I want to make sure I get my cut. Okay. So then what you can do when you put the NFT on whatever marketplace you choose to release it on, we use um, OpenSea again as an example, you might say, well, I want to put a 50% royalty on that NFT, okay? And maybe your baseline when you first started out, first sale might have been $100, right? And then let's say I'm going to use Berta for example, or Crystal or, or Renee, for example, let's just say uh, Renee got out there and she was like, I got a massive network and I can't do what he does, but I can sell some stuff. So I'm going to buy this NFT from him. Not only am I going to collect bounties on anybody else that try to sell, the, sell any of the NFTs that he has available, I'm also going to buy one myself and I'm going to sell it. Okay, I'm gonna sell this video because it is valuable. They can't get this any, anywhere else. They don't have access to this package. Well, then she pops it out there, smart move, and puts it as a an auction. I don't know why anybody puts a price on an NFT. You can't tell somebody what it's worth. It's better for you to just list it as an auction and let them tell you. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can put your NFTs out there, release it as an auction. And then just let it let it run. Highest bidder wins. Whoever bids the most on that particular NFT is the winner. But let's just say, for example, so Renee did that. She released it as a an auction, but then maybe she had it for maybe the highest bidder was like three hundred dollars. Okay. But then you also had a fifty percent bounty on that NFT. You would make a hundred and fifty dollars if if you had a not a bounty, not my bad, a royalty. You had a 50% royalty on that NFT. You would make 150 in your sleep. You didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. But then Renee, Renee would have made $150 in crypto off of that NFT as well. So it creates an instant win-win situation. But the beautiful part about it is you would, you would never have to cut a check all of this is instantly distributed via a smart contract it's on the blockchain it's a public ledger so anybody can see like what you got going on how many sales have been generated they can see your whole transaction history and, and everything and then it just keeps going from there but check this out it doesn't stop there so let's just say renee sold that um that nft to jay okay Jay bought the NFT from Renee at $300 and she's got a massive network as well. And then let's say Berta bought that NFT from Jay and maybe she was the highest bidder and maybe somebody paid $500 for it. Again, you never know what somebody's going to pay for this. You never know. <laughs> so $500, 50% royalty. How much did you make, Roger? 250 Let's go. Let's go. Now you're like, what? okay <laughs> who cares whatever is worth to that individual is what is worth and then it just keeps going and going and going that's enterprise that's mm. enterprise right there you're working smart and not hard you're letting an army of people that you might not ever see a day in your life exactly for something for you because they have the network or or they have the wherewithal or whatever the case may be but check it out it doesn't stop there. So let's say <laughs> for example, you take that that 250 that you just made. You made 250 when it changed hands from Renee to Berta. And then you made another, what was that? 150 when Renee sold it to Jay. So what's that? 50, $400. $400 that you made in your sleep for one video that you slapped on Instagram, threw some packages together, and you're chilling, right? So then let's just say, for example, you're like, well, that was passive income. You got two choices. You can take that money and then cash it out. You can trade it or exchange it to USDC or, or USDT or Bitcoin or whatever you want to do with the currency um, at that point of time. 
or you can maybe get creative and, and have your smart contract do like a 50%, like separate all of your revenue, 50% into like a USDT, USDC type of currency, and then, then a 50% into whatever other currency, or maybe you just want to create like your own little savings account and have another wallet partition yeah. for that. Let Buy some you, more <laughs> Right. <laughs> Buy some more stuff. Let your money grow. So let's just say, for example, during that time frame, as that NFT changed hands from, uh, look, all these names, from Renee, wait, from, from you to Renee, Renee to Jay, Jay. and then Jay to Berta, during uh -huh. that time, let's just say Ethereum went up $400. Yeah, that's the caveat right here. Uh-huh. That's the speed button. Yeah, you kept making money. So now it's like you made four hundred dollars in your sleep, but then you turned around and because that currency that you was sm smart enough to use, you set it there in your wallet and it continued to appreciate, mm -hmm. then you have a choice to either let that keep growing or whatever the case may be, but you making money on top of money on top of money, currency, mm -hmm. not current sit your money exactly. is growing. So, mm -hmm. I mean, y'all know I can go, I mean, I can talk about this all day, but, <laughs> but in a nutshell, that's how you can use it for your business. And this applies to whatever. I just had a guy, he asked me um, about one of his, his, his companies. Uh, I think he does like plastic surgery or something. He said, can I do that? Well, I said, listen, any business, if you take your product or your, or your service, you package it, and then you create an NFT, make it super scarce, you know, maybe 250, 500, 1,000, doesn't matter. You ha release a series and you do it just like that, selling you money on top of money on top of money. And because crypto is starting to become more more popular you're seeing different currencies come out the cbdc is is uh the central bank digital currency the feds they're working on releasing their own currency as well even if they don't necessarily like bitcoin or ethereum okay mm -hmm. and they just maybe they just want a way a, a way to make money fine use a stable coin as a part of that particular nft so that they don't have to be afraid that they're going to lose their money or anything weird like that. They can go ahead and just take the stable coin and cash out. But I'm telling you, it's money that you didn't have before. Yes. It's money that you don't have to spend. You don't have to sacrifice your own money to tap into the crypto industry. Just sell other people's NFTs and then go from there. Exactly. Um, and then you're now starting to create your own NFT because you have a you know, spot for it. And, you know, you haven't yet pretty much you've like build an audience just by selling others people NFTs. So now you become that person now when you launch your own NFT, of course, people are going to want it to. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, you can even go out on the market to see other people who may have NFTs that are available for sale as well. And if you, I mean, if you're confident and you're like, I don't care, like they're not me, I, I'll put that. You can even create your own marketplace because a lot of these NFTs, once you mint them, they even have like embed codes to where you can put them on your website. So you can start building out your own marketplace as well to sell different products and services from other people who have minted their NFTs as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to release an NFT science pretty soon to kind of break that down. But what kind of questions do you have for me, Roger? <laughs> um, so far, uh, with the NFT, uh, that was amazing, right? Yeah, that was amazing breakdown. So, you know, now I'm kind of like, when you were talking about it, the wheels were like really spinning on the different type of packages that I wasn't necessarily think, even thinking about turning it into a package. I was thinking more of like just putting my logo out there and then, you know, building content online with social media. And then, you know, that's how the evaluation of my NFT will go up. Now you're telling me that, no, no, no. There's a other way to do it to turn it into a package, make it rare, and then know you're selling that, not just your logo, you're selling packages just like you would sell anywhere else. Yep. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> just, just think there of it is. as like a cryptocurrency e-commerce solution, pretty mm -hmm. much. 
Um, and and, and that's one of my goals. That's one of my goals is to like be the first metaverse personal trainer. And so that's why I'm like really trying to get into this NFTs. But that's why I'm getting into this. Getting NFT into thing. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I can be like the first big metaverse personal trainer. And I know NFTs is the way to do it. It's the way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because the metaverse is all NFTs. It's all blockchain. Mm -hmm. From the the houses to the furniture to the cars to the whatever. So yeah, if you get you an avatar and you up here working out with your avatar <laughs> or, or or look, check it out. If you go and get like a um, if you go get a plot of land in the metaverse, but then yeah, nothing too big, nothing too big. Just just get you a plot of land and then like have someone build like you a little your own little gym or whatever, and then you can do like daily like little fitness sessions or whatever the case may be. People who are a part of the metaverse they can come in and work out with you. They don't even have to physically be in person, but they can see what you're doing and they can do what you're doing virtually um that's another way for you to get established and you don't have to have a physical brick and mortar as well mm -hmm. all i'm saying Cheryl, don't post this video until i buy the land and create that then you can post i'm mad at you <laughs> <laughs> you better run i don't want any other, other trainer to hear this right now <laughs> yeah well um sorry somebody's talking to me um yeah yeah well come on now you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna put me in prison like that go <laughs> ahead and go do it tonight go ahead and go, <laughs> go ahead. i'm gonna do it tonight 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 right you like she gave me so much homework but shoot me a message um roger and i'll tell you a couple places that you can go to grab you know just grab a plot i don't know what your financial scenario is like but yeah most devs like just go grab a, a plot to eat to at least lock it down Go to um what do you think about so there's um this place called Florida. There's like there's a big NFT, like a lot of people are buying a lot of NFT market space in Florida. What do you think about that one? Like what would be like a good marketplace to go buy a piece of plot of land? In, oh, like, you're talking about because Florida's going crypto? Yeah. Yeah. Um you, from a metaverse standpoint or just from a, a, mm -hmm. a standard NFT? Metaverse. Metaverse. So because we're live right now, I want to give you a chance to go and grab uh, that first. <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> just send me a message and let me tell you so you can get a head start before somebody does it. Um, good. <laughs> I was about to say something else to you, but I know people are real cutthroat. They grimy. They try to go and snatch yeah. up, you know, different solutions. Y'all. Y'all look at his notepad. Buddy been over here taking mad notes. He said, heck yeah. Um, uh, but, but but yeah, um, just when, when we get off, I'll send you a couple links so you can go and grab your um, couple things to kind of get started or to at least reserve it so nobody steals it um, and then go from there. But you are on the right track. One thing I can really appreciate about you is how innovative you are. You're extremely coachable, very pliable. That is going to look really good when the investors, the donors, the sponsors, they see that not only are you working good to represent your brand here, but you are also forward thinking and you're looking into creating NFTs and getting in, into blockchain technology as a whole. So congratulations on that. That's just huge by itself. But yeah, I got you. I got you. Let's go. <laughs> okay, we could definitely talk about that soon. But yeah, the last thing that I just want to touch on really quickly, because a lot of people, they don't fully understand like NFTs and how they work. Um, so it's, it's like a four step thing on how I try to break NFTs down when people are trying to understand. But NFTs, my bad, y'all, hold on. Um, NFTs are powered, write this down. NFTs are powered by smart contracts are transacted in cryptocurrency and executed on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. On the blockchain. That's the easiest way to explain it. Mm -hmm. 
in a digestible way if someone asks you what's the nft and, and how does that work or this that it's 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 a um nfts are powered by smart contracts transacted in crypto and executed on the blockchain when you have people asking for reviews testimonials anything like that the, you froze on me you'll be back um when you have people that are asking questions about you know um like like what's an nft and how it works they can break that down you can also go to coinmarketcap.com and you can go there to look and see which nft We lost you for a second. <laughs> Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Oh, me, uh, oh there you are. Okay. There you are. But 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 yeah, so people don't fully understand like the NFTs and like how they work, but that's the easiest way for you to be able to explain like in short how it works. Um but but you're going to get more and more people that are going to develop understandings about it you are well ahead of the curve and you will actually be one of the first fitness trainers to be able to come and to nft their their videos their books or whatever for for you though i think your power is going to be in the videos that you have okay mm -hmm. So you definitely want to want to hold on to that. Like I said, start to create your packages, get that thing going, get that thing going, stay ahead of the wave, stay ahead of the curve, go ahead and grab that metaverse, get your domains, like go, 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 go. So you can really solidify your business and establish yourself as an authority for where the world is about to go very, very shortly. You're not going to have a choice anyway, but now you're doing it on your own. So you, you get to learn along the way yes. oh i was given tips that's what happened when you cut out i was telling people where they can go you can mm -hmm. go to coinmarketcap.com and on coinmarketcap.com there's a tab of talking about nfts you can see like the daily sales volume or something like that yesterday i went and it was like the value at that point in time was like nineteen million dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, was uh nineteen million dollars. Um, there's so, but but it gives you daily numbers. It gives you thirty day numbers. It gives you um, quarterly numbers, and then it gives you annual numbers if you want to see. But you can even check like which NFT platforms are doing what, what NFTs are trending. You don't really care because you're doing this for your business. But I'm just saying from a market study standpoint, when you're trying to find out which platforms you want to post on, that's a really good way for you to be able to do that as well. Okay. All right. So that's pretty much all I have for you right now. If you don't have any no. other questions, I'll go ahead and leave. Let you go. <laughs> I can't hear you. You in the matrix real bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you said what? Let me come back. You want to come back in? Okay. No, right times video. No, and the posting device settings. Uh, it says here, uh, let me pick it up. Here, but there, but internal speaker. Let's go. Can you hear me from? Oh, the there you go. You're perfect. Ah, okay, let me turn off the earpods. Good. Okay. There it is. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah, you're back. But yeah, yeah. So that that's it. That's all I got for you today. Um, it's been a pleasure, Roger. Listen, I'm so freaking proud of you. You've been doing phenomenal. Congratulations on on your progress. I can't wait to see your face when you get your hundred and five thousand dollars. That's gonna be oh. super excited. Yes. yes. <laughs> what do you no think worries. you're gonna do with it when when you get? Huh? 
So NFT, NFTs, of course, that's all I've been thinking about. I'm going strictly NFTs because I, I told you the plan already. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's why that's like cool. daily, like I've already created for next year, I have already created about mm -hmm. 500 pieces of content to post every single day. So that's how I already created for 2022 already. <laughs> So yeah, see, he just told y'all. In other words, I got at least five hundred to a thousand NFTs coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. I love yep. it. That's what's up. If I can high five you, mm. let's go. <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, <man. laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and let, go ahead and let you go. We've been parlaying. We usually go to about six p.m., but uh, let me just pop over to the audience really quickly because we had quite a few uh people that it's a lot of comments actually i can't see them right now but ladies and gentlemen i promise i'm going to pop back in and answer them for you let me just try one more thing and see if i can get the comments to appear for me i don't know why it's giving me a hard time there you go oh i oh i didn't know we have more time to talk sure i, I didn't know like what the time limit or anything that's why i was like I have so many questions. <laughs> well, first of all, I think I send you my um, website. So this is my new website mm -hmm. that I'm developing. Let me send it, see if I can get it in our chat right here. Just um, okay. share screen. Oh, I can share screen here? Okay. Let me, you want me to share my screen? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay, perfect. Yeah, you, you can. We, we, got, we got 14 minutes. Okay, perfect. Uh, open system preferences. Uh, open system preferences. Um, let's see if it's going to do it. Let's go to menu, Max security under screen recording menu, check the box next to Google to allow. Oh, there it is. It's over here. So I got to unlock it. Turn it in Google. Data. Okay, perfect. So now I should be able to do it now. Should be able to share my screen. Share. Okay, there we go. And then we're just gonna go entire screen and share. Bam. Perfect. Should be okay, able to yeah, see my you told me you started sharing. Awesome. All right. So uh yeah. my new website that I created. I'm telling you guys. Uh, Canva, Canva is the place to go uh, when you want to create um, content. So I create a ton of content on Canva. So this oh. is my like site that I'm building right here. Uh, should be finished right here. I'm just okay. using it to capture leads and everything right here. So again, like all of these, I'm going to probably turn into an NFT. You know that if you said it, I'm like, I can't give this away for free. I can turn this into an NFT. And give exclusive content so exactly. i'm gonna be doing that too yes. as well almost finished with this website right here i like how it turned out and everything i build it more of like a funnel so it can give that like one month free connect with me so this is going to be all over on like facebook instagram youtube just that one direct link to start driving uh clients okay. into it as well so that's one thing that i'm executing okay. on right here what are your thoughts on it uh sure do you think Traditional website or funnel? I'm a funnel fan uh, just because people will come into your flow. And if you don't have a funnel in place, the bounce rate, your, your closing ratio will be super low and your bounce rate will often be super high. And then studies show that your average prospective customer has to see your your offer your product or service at least seven times before they actually take action mm -hmm. so yeah i'm definitely one of those that that's a big fan um if you do decide to run an ad campaign based off of this particular page i would even like drill it down to um like a particular page that's laser targeted super easy for them to know like what to do next you mm -hmm. want to cre create an opportunity to start dripping information on there so like for example that one week of a free workout you can put that on like your cta 
for the website. And I, I don't know what happens when you click that form. Oh, it goes to, yeah, it goes to a form. So it goes directly into okay. my form where they fill out this form right here and then I'll contact them. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one thing that you definitely want to make sure that you do get creative with that form make sure that your brand consistency your colors because i just saw your colors change so you know i'm gonna fuss at you um <laughs> make sure that you you keep your colors on point you know the orange the the um the white and the black you want to keep that on there um mm -hmm. but then you also want to keep giving them a visual so let's say for example if you ran an ad and the image that you use for the ad, you want them to always see that so they know exactly like where to go, what's going on. They don't feel like they just got bounced to another website or whatever. So that's why that brand consistency is going to be important. You've done really good thus far. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, if you maintain that, that, that brand consistency with the visuals as well with the, what you've given them like right now. So when they click that, they'll, they'll know that they're still in the right space. They're still being motivated. They're still excited about what you have to offer. Okay. But then what you also want to do is take your custom short link and put those behind those buttons as well so you can keep track of where they're going all right mm -hmm. um and then so like like let's say for example if when they come let's say if you kept that up all right with just those three links but then you want to see how many people actually clicked the link for your button or, or for the form versus like how many people actually completed the form and that lets you know like where your weak spots are where you need to go in order to make your campaign perform better mm -hmm. makes sense those makes are sense. different things that you, yeah yeah but then also what you can do is you can build out retargeting campaigns based off of the actions that they take on your website mm -hmm. makes sense yeah because so, i like maybe, Go ahead. Oh yeah, I was saying I can track it through uh, Mailchimp because I connect Mailchimp to it, and I just use certain words um, to connect it. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying, using the short links to connect these right here, and so that's why I get it all connected yep. right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll let you know how many people click versus how many people actually took action. But then what you can also do is embed a Facebook a Facebook pixel on mm -hmm. these links too, to where like, let's say for example, maybe they completed that form, but they didn't get all the way to check out. You can build ads specifically for those people and you can mm -hmm. have like a video connecting with them and like, hey, you know, you came to the website. I noticed that, that you were interested in what I had to offer, but I still haven't seen you in, in my, on my calendar yet or whatever. Don't be afraid to take action, rah, rah, rah. Like get them hyped up again and encourage them to take actions from there. Again, this is all based off of whatever it is that they do, whatever actions they take on, on your website when they come to whatever page you choose to have them landing on. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Definitely. So that, that that's a part of Facebook retargeting, but you have to have a pixel activated on your website or at least on the form. I know mm -hmm. that type form, uh has uh pixels to where you can enable them it looks like you might be using google, google forms is that what you're using yeah okay yes I'm yeah using so google. google forms they okay they should have a way for you to be able to pop that link um that pixel on there but if they don't then you can you can always switch over to type form to grab the rest of that information it's entirely up to you um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. These fitness fundamentals, everyone should know why and how to stretch. Like those are real, yeah, really good lead magnets. Now with this, after they put their email address in, we got six minutes. Tell me what's happening 
after they fill out that form? Uh, so as soon as they put that in right here, it goes, um, they get the direct download. And then so they go right into, so it just says get book. And then so it's a direct mm -hmm. download right here. Okay, so but then, then what happens after, after that? And then they go right into an email campaign. Okay. Okay. And then how long is your, it looks good. Mm -hmm. Keep yeah, going. So Let me see. They get a nice solid 10 page right there. And then I just put my nice. logo. I love it. Mm -hmm. And a couple, I'm going to add a couple uh, direct links to as well in the book. And then I'm going to add a couple more social media links to as well, since it's a digital book. Okay. I just put right here for more info, mm -hmm. visit our peers training so they can redirect to the website um, when they're finished right here. Right. Mm -hmm. Plus okay. I got the email so, where I can email. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, you, you definitely, if you haven't done so already, at least a five to seven point drip campaign to where mm -hmm. maybe once a week or uh, once every two weeks or whatever, I would say really like once a week, keep sending them different free tips and content just to at least get to that seventh. So usually when I do it, it's seven to 10 touches. And then every time you do that, you have a call to action to try to convert them as they're opening those emails. You can do this via text as well. Um, if you have them go like based off of the information on the form and you get their permission. But with the with the your drip campaign once they download that first free piece maybe you want to keep like talking to them from that point going forward but can you go back to that form real quick uh which one the it doesn't matter what form i'm going to show you something real quick we got three minutes so uh, no, my bad not that form but to, no 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 my bad to the ebook oh yes to the ebook yeah okay. so. Where did I put my ebook? Did I close it? Oh, I think I went backwards. There we go. Might have closed it, my bad. Okay. On your ebook, though, super important. Mm -hmm. Try to always include a CTA on the bottom of every page. CTA. So, like, go to page two. Mm -hmm. On page two, page two you did. You you have a CTA, but I would make that like bold mm -hmm. and orange or, okay. or something like that. But um, and I would also reposition that. I would say for more advice on how to reach your fitness goals, oh. please visit or visit and then give them a link mm -hmm. for them to click. Um, but then what we do from a marketing standpoint is make it relevant to the content that was on this particular page. So if this page is about stretching and maybe you have a more detailed video or something about stretching, then you can put that content there. But then on uh, the next slide, it may be talking about something different, but maybe it's going to take them to the same link every time. But every page that you have with this fabulous content, it, it may speak to different people at different points of time. Mm, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what, what you do is you have conversion points. Every page should have a call to action because every page represents an opportunity to convert that from a free customer to a paying customer. Mm. every page all right yep but this is good it's good good layout it's very clean mm -hmm. i would say to take certain spots on there and incorporate a little bit more orange mm -hmm. for more grand uh brand consistency i would also make sure that your logo is on every single page somewhere not too junky but just you know maybe as um change the opacity in the background to where it's not as coarse so that they always see your logo or they always see your brand 
And you can also like constantly like just make reference to the name of your company because right now you're not quite established to the point to where they can see that avatar and know exactly who you are. So mm -hmm. you want to keep drilling that in there. But overall, this is beautiful. Okay, perfect. Definitely will do. All right, so I hate to go, Roger, but we are out of time. It is 6 p.m. and that's all we have for today. Awesome. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. Execute, let's go. Yes, yes, yes. So I look forward to seeing the execution. Again, congratulations on your continued success. 18%, you're almost there to that 105,000. So keep up the great work, okay? Yes, thank you.